If you have chosen to view this video, it likely means you're considering a role as a cabin crew member at Etihad Airways. And since I'll be joining the Etihad cabin crew team next month, based on my own experience, I know what you will have to go through to secure a job offer from them. An online application, self-introduction video recordings, the virtual assessment and an English test. By the way, keep in mind that airlines tend to change their recruitment stages over time, so I'm sharing only what I have experienced myself in 2023. I've already created videos about the first two stages, which you can check out later if you haven't seen them, but today we are going to discuss what the virtual assessment day entails, its duration, uh, what you need to wear, what questions you might be asked, and what you can expect during your interview overall. This information is relatively rare, so if you find it useful, please leave a like on this video and subscribe. Here I'm sharing my own process of becoming a flight attendant. And if I can accomplish it, you can too. My name is Zara. All right, let's get started. Well, if Etihad Airways likes the video recordings you submitted in stage 2, they will send you an email invitation to the virtual assessment. In this email, you will find two steps with corresponding links that you need to follow to schedule your virtual assessment. In the first step, you will have to choose the most convenient date for your assessment. In the second step, you will need to fill out a declaration form with your personal information, details about your previous experience, and other information needed to process your application further. This form consists of 16 questions and it's easy to fill out. An important note, at the end of the form, you have to confirm the date you selected in step 1. Make sure you fill out everything accurately because recruiters will review this when proceeding to your final interview. After completing both steps, you will receive a confirmation of your chosen date. Additionally, you can expect to receive a reminder email at least 24 hours before your virtual assessment date. This email will contain a link and instructions for the virtual assessment which will be conducted using Microsoft Teams. In my personal experience, none of the participants received the link for the interview on time due to technical reasons, so we were unaware of what to expect, whether the interview would take place on the chosen day or not. My interview was supposed to start at 8.45 a.m., but I received the link only at 9 a.m. Later on, recruiters explained to us that this kind of issue happens rarely, but anyway, just in case, let's go through all the important information contained in this email so you will have an idea of what to expect. The event details, required attire, technical preparations, meeting link and post-assessment requirements. I'll repeat, you will most probably receive this information 24 hours prior to a virtual assessment, but it's still important to know what you need to wear and be prepared to send your photos right after your interview. And if we are clear on the preparations, let's discuss what the virtual assessment is like in general. In my case, there were approximately 20 participants and two recruiters. The recruiters provided us with an agenda for the day and then allowed us to talk to each other. I don't know if they observed our conversation, but it was an opportunity for us to get to know each other. After some time, the recruiters explained once again what we should expect from the interview and reminded us about the importance of language proficiency and declarations regarding tattoos and scars. They divided us into two groups and sent us a chat message specifying the order in which we would attend the interview. After that, they started transitioning each participant one by one for an individual interview where you speak privately with the recruiter and no one else can hear you. The rest of the participants could still talk in the main meeting room while they waited for their turn. Alright, let's imagine that it's your turn to have an individual interview. Firstly, the recruiter will inform you that they are recording it and then uh, will confirm uh, your personal details, height and decorations about languages, scars and tattoos. After that, the recruiter will ask you to come closer to the camera and show your smile, uh, your hands from both sides and uh, your neck, like this. And uh, then you will be asked to step away and show yourself entirely from the back and front. Afterward, uh, the recruiter will reconfirm once again if you have anything to declare. If not, uh, the recruiter will start asking questions. 
By the way, this is why you have to wear a short sleeve top to demonstrate that you have nothing to hide on your skin. As for the questions, I was asked why I changed airlines quickly, why I left Air Astana, why I left Qatar Airways. Additionally, they inquired what if I decide to leave Etihad soon. The recruiter had doubts that I have a serious intention to join them. For those who don't know me, I'm 32 years old with previous background in flying. So after that, the recruiter asked what I know about Etihad Airways and if I had a challenging situation when I disagreed with my colleague resulting in a conflict. By the way, it was more like a statement than a question. And personally, I don't remember anything like that because in Qatar Airways, most of flight attendants are really good team players and I can barely recall such a situation. So I shared uh, one story from my distant past. Following that, the recruiter asked me if I agreed to do a little role play where I would be a cabin crew member and she would act as a passenger. I agreed and the situation she played involved a woman who had requested food for her medication an hour ago, but no one brought it. After this role play, the recruiter mentioned that she had no more questions for me except for confirming if I'm vaccinated and asking about my notice period. That's it. When my individual interview was finished, I asked my father to take photos of me. I needed two full-length photos, one in business attire and another in smart casual. Uh, and frankly speaking, I still don't understand what smart casual means. Uh, so my dad took two photos like this. Actually, you can upload even more photos. Uh, I really appreciate our recruiters. They advised us to choose uh, the photos that we personally like with a wide smile because people who will do final decisions may just look at our photos. Uh, and also they instructed us not to spend money on professional photos. Uh, the background doesn't matter. You can simply take them with your phone. Uh, and it's really cool that Etihad is so open-minded. So eventually I sent my photos to their email. And uh, by the way, you will not receive any confirmation that they received your photos. But if they are missing your photos, they will remind you about it. Don't worry. As for the duration of this virtual assessment, in my case, as I was forced in line for an individual interview with the recruiter, I was connected to Microsoft Teams approximately for two and a half hours. And uh, my individual interview lasted maximum 15 minutes. And those who were scheduled for an individual interview after me were required to stay connected and wait for their turn to come. So just in case, make sure that you have all day available for this online event. That's all I can say about the virtual assessment. I will not give any advices because it's really individual and please don't ask me how I answered my questions and how I reacted in that role play because all my experience and expertise in customer service interactions I have already put in my book Cabin Crew Solutions. So just read it, analyze it, modify it, play with it, learn from it, practice it, whatever. Good luck with your interviews. Bye-bye.